Hello and welcome to our ongoing coverage of the 2023 Shanghai International Auto Show. For this particular video, we're going to be giving you a look at all the most exciting Chinese EVs debuting at the show. Let's go. With hands-on test drives and reviews of exciting Chinese market vehicles, Wheelsboy is the number one source for China Auto Insights. Be sure to check us out on Instagram and Facebook. Let's start by talking about this, the BYD Song L Concept SUV. While we don't know very much about the car and can't even see the interior, we do know that the exterior styling should be representative of future BYD designs. The Song uh, SUV line is one of the best-selling series for BYD and indeed probably the best-selling SUV series in all of China. What's not a concept car is that, the Destroyer 07 sedan. Okay, so Destroyer is the Chinese name or the direct translation, but I'm told that a better English translation that they would use is the Chaser. Either way, this 5-meter sedan is so far only going to be sold here in China and is going to use a 1.5-liter four-cylinder kind of hybrid powertrain, probably PHEV. First the Dolphin, then the Seal, and now the Seagull. That's right, BYD's menagerie of ocean animals has increased by one. This diminutive little city car is going to be joining the BYD lineup as its smallest and most affordable model. I say diminutive because the Seagull measures a scant 3.78 meters in length. That kind of helps to explain the proportions, which to me at least, look like a plus-size remote control car. I almost expect an antenna to sprout out of the roof. The interior of the Seagull is just as simple as you would expect from a car that's only going to cost between about 11500 and 14500 US dollars. It's also highly similar to that of the BYD Dolphin. That means things like the transmission button that's been integrated into a row of uh, knobs below the 10.1 inch center screen. Material quality is, well, pretty good considering the price point, and there also seems to be a high level of features. Take, for example, the wireless charging pad and the small digital instrument cluster. The Seagull has a wheelbase of just 2.5 meters in length. However, rear passenger space is surprisingly abundant. I have about a fist over my head. I am 1.75 meters tall, or about 5 foot 9 inches, and I feel like I have a decent amount of space, both above the head and when it comes to legroom as well. The Seagull will launch with a single motor option, 55 kilowatts and 135 newton meters of torque. There were also rumors swirling this car would have a sodium ion battery available. However, it seems when it launches, it will only have lithium iron phosphate batteries. The first of those batteries will measure 30 kilowatts and the second is 38.8. They will provide a CLTC range of 305 and 405 kilometers respectively. NIO continues the rollout of its latest generation of SUVs with the ES6, which should be one of its highest volume models. Specific information about the ES6 is very limited at this point, but we do know that it's going to have the same platform, NT2.0, and the same computing platform, the Atom supercomputing platform. We also expect it to have the same sensor pack as the larger ES7. That includes the watchtower with its LiDAR unit mounted there in the middle. The design of the car is also, as you can see, largely similar to that of the larger ES7 SUV. The interior, well, we can only look at it from the outside, but as you can see, it's largely similar to the ES7 once again. That means a instrument cluster here and then a relatively small center screen, but Neo is known for their very simplistic, minimalist interiors, and I personally find them very attractive. As I mentioned, specific information is very limited at this point, but we can make some educated guesses, starting with the fact that this will have battery swapping like other NEOs. That means a 75 kilowatt hour battery and a 100 kilowatt hour battery and probably a 150 kilowatt hour solid state battery for rental later this year. Powertrain wise, well, there'll be certainly a dual motor version with hopefully up to 480 kilowatts, just like the larger ES7. The price, well, all I know is that it's not going to exceed 380,000 RMB, which is about 55,000 US dollars. That is the G6, a stylish electric coupe SUV from Xpeng. The EV startup was one of the first Chinese EV brands to enter the European market, and this thing is likely to be sold in that market alongside Xpeng models like the P7 and the G9. The front end features the signature LED strip from Xpeng, the so-called lightsaber, but the side, well, it's got a unique and very bow-like shape that's unlike any Xpeng SUV before, including the G3i and the G9. To me, it brings to mind the Mercedes-Benz EQ series. Very handsome. We've got no official numbers, including powertrain or battery size or price, but we've been hearing things like 358 kilowatts from a dual-motor electric powertrain. 
not bad. Pricing should be between about 30 and 45,000 US dollars, which would put it underneath of their top G9 SUV. 2023 will see yet another Chinese automaker making a run at the European market. This time, it's Geely subbrand Zeker and their Zeker X. The Zeker X is built in the same SEA architecture as other Zeker models like the 001 and the 009 MPV, as well as models from both Volvo and Smart. It also has the same powertrains as the Smarts, like the Smart number one and number three. That means 200 or 315 kilowatts from a dual motor powertrain, zero to 100 kilometers per hour, as fast as 3.7 seconds. Zeker describes the X as a SUV, but the proportions and the size, 4.45 meters in length, are much more similar to a hatchback, if you ask me. That's okay though. I figure European customers will be more interested in a hatchback than they would a tiny SUV. Regardless of whether you get the single motor rear mounted powertrain or the dual motor powertrain, they all come with a 66 kilowatt hour battery, making a maximum range of 560 kilometers on the CLTC site. The Zeker X has some very nice material qualities inside, including real leather seats. But the real show happens with this, the center screen. There is only one center screen. Right now it's in front of the passenger, but if I take four fingers and do this, it slides down here to the middle. When the Zeker X hits the market, we'll have two different versions, a five-seater and a four-seater, like the one you see here. By the way, the center console also moves back and forth. The best part of the Zeker X, however, is the price. 27600 to 32800 US dollars for a top-spec model here in the Chinese market. Time to check out the latest from Tank, a premium off-road brand. This model is the Tank 400. It's always an open question with Tank which other off-roader they will kind of be uh, inspired by. The Tank 300 was clearly inspired by things like the, I don't know, Toyota FJ, for example. The Tank 500, well, it looks like a Land Cruiser. This one, though, clearly Toyota 400. At least that's what I thought when I saw it in photos. But when I got closer, I realized, hmm, it's really not that similar. Perhaps the overall shape, there's definitely some inspiration, but the details are very different and very interesting, including these dramatic daytime running lights up here, as well as some very cool stuff that's happening on the fenders and around the wheels. Like any off-roader worth its salt, the Tank 400 has a barn-style rear door with full-size mounted spare tire. The exterior might look a bit like a Toyota 4Runner, but the interior absolutely does not. In fact, this has more in common with the Tank 500, their most expensive model, than it does with the more affordable Tank 300. That includes this very impressive long central screen, as well as a digital instrument cluster, and pretty good material quality. I have to say, this thing definitely feels more luxurious than the Tank 300 that we drove. Soft, real metal features in some places like these screws, not bad. My favorite thing about this car though, and I think the most interesting thing, is the fact that it is a plug-in hybrid that uses the newer Hi 4 t PHEV system that was developed by Great Wall Motor, the mother company for the tank brand. This is gonna appear on a bunch of different Great Wall Motor brands, including Paval cars as well. The PHEV means that it has a pure electric range and it can be plugged in and charged. That means you have a, I don't know, SUV that looks really tough and off-roady, but actually, pretty economical and slightly more environmentally friendly. Denza, a brand originally started by BYD and Mercedes-Benz, has chosen the Shanghai Auto Show to debut their latest model, the N7 Coupe SUV. The previous generation of Denza SUV, the Denza X, was styled inside and out by Mercedes-Benz, but that's not the case with the N7. Mercedes-Benz has taken a step back from this joint venture and now only owns a 10% stake rather than a 50%. That means there's no more styled by Mercedes-Benz badges on this car, but I have to say, this is easily the best looking Denza model yet. The N7 will be the first model from any BYD brand to feature the new Desis A air suspension system. That is going to be standard on the N7. That system will also work together with the camera that's mounted on the front of the windshield to scan the road ahead and therefore prepare the suspension rather in advance rather than reacting to whatever obstacles it runs into. The model we were just looking at doesn't have LiDAR, but the N7 will have it available as an option. We were very impressed with the improvement in material quality between the last generation of Denza and this new generation of Denza, and we got that impression by driving the Denza D9. That applies to the N7 as well. This center console is trimmed in real leather, very, very soft to the touch. This is a wireless charging pad here with some kind of 
micro suede, a very nice soft micro suede. There are plastics here in the center console. We have a bunch of touch sensitive buttons. Not my favorite, but we won't go into that. Large 15 plus inch center console screen here. Snappy responses, looks very good. We enjoyed that in the D9 as well. Full digi digital instrument cluster and over here, a passenger screen, multimedia, GPS, it's got it all. Storage options, this being an EV, there's a large center console area down here, as well as, let's see, ooh, a very deep center console storage area. We don't know everything about the powertrain of the N7, but we know some details, including the powertrain options. There's going to be two versions, a big surprise, a rear motor version, 230 kilowatts, and a rear end front mounted version that'll make a total of 390 kilowatts. Same powertrain from the BYD seal. Battery wise, we've heard that there is going to be something around like a 91 or 92 kilowatt hour battery with up to 700 plus miles of CLTC range. That's going to do it for today's video from the 2023 Shanghai International Auto Show. But that's not the only video we've done. Be sure to check out the other ones in our playlist. And as always, like, subscribe, and hit the bell.